during this COVID time, it's been difficult, um, not only for us individually, but for many ministries um, around the country, around the world, um, who are serving Christ and on this mission of evangelizing. And so uh, thank you for your support. And we would like to ask for your continuous support. So if you can, um, just visit our website, uh, soerle.com. Or if you can, we'll have a basket at the end of the night by the door so you guys can leave your donation. Um, but I would like to thank you in advance um, for your donation and know that you'll be blessed twice as much for that donation that you share with us and, and know that it's going to a wonderful cause of evangelization here in the city of LA through So Early. Amen? All right, so up next, I'm going to invite Deacon Doug. Um, he's going to share his testimony with us um, before we invite our guest speaker, Johnny. All right, amen, amen. And I, I'm on a time limit. I can spend all night giving my testimony, but I'm only going to give a, a nutshell version right now. Uh, I don't know if everybody heard, but around the beginning of the year, on top of all the other anxiety about COVID and everything, I went in for my uh, annual checkup at the VA hospital, and um, my father died of... of, of, of um, prostate cancer, so I told her to check my prostate. And after a series of uh, tests and prodding and pushing and poking and examining and all these things, the doctor calls me and says, Mr. Johnson, you have cancer. That's all she said. And she said, the specialist will call you for more consultation. And I want to tell you all, no matter what your circumstance, no matter what your condition, no matter what your situation, no matter what you're going through, I want to encourage you tonight to stay in a miracle mindset. Keep yourself in a miracle mindset. Because just for a few days, I, got, I, I felt like there was a wave of depression a wave of anger, a wave of, of resentment, a wave of bitterness. And all of that was distracting and getting in the way of my miracle. So I had to, I had to, had to, had to move that out of the way. I had, to, I had to get past all of that bitterness and resentment and even jealousy. I was jealous. I thought to myself, why do I have to have this? Why can't my brother have it instead? This is what I want everybody to do tonight. I want to tell you, I'm standing up here cancer-free, amen. Let's give God praise. I'm cancer-free tonight. I'm cancer-free, and I believe not only am I cancer-free, but I'm free of the sin of bitterness. I'm free of the sin of resentment. I'm free of the sin of jealousy. I'm free of the sin of everything that is, will keep me away from my miracle. And uh, I discovered how to be set free. I discovered how to receive my miracle. It's get in the position of what I call the miracle mindset. And I think I might have about two more minutes to share with you how I continue to stay above and not believe beneath my miracles. When I say above, I'm saying I'm not defeated. You're not defeated, amen. Say amen. You're not defeated. I mean, when I found out that I had cancer, I just felt so defeated. But then I, I, I got... I, what I did is I went on a, my own personal retreat. I went to the priest, and I had a moment in, with spiritual direction and, and, the, and the sacrament of, of reconciliation. And I went deep into the love of Christ, and I allowed the love of Christ to heal me and lift me up. What do I say? When I say the miracle mindset tonight, what I'm asking everybody to, to do is position yourself to receive tonight. Positioning yourself to receive is don't get stuck in your head. Get out of your head and get on your knees. Amen. Sometimes I call it the stinking thinking. Get the, get, get, I, was, I was so stuck in my head. And what, I, what the Lord spoke to me was this. It is 
what it is. You don't need to analyze it. You don't need to figure it out. You don't need to wonder why. All you need to do is let it go. Just let me heal you. Just get on your knees. And here's another principle of the miracle mindset. Don't, don't, re don't hesitate. Don't procrastinate. Just get there as fast as you can. Just get in the presence of God. Get in the presence of God like it's the most important thing, like it's more important than breathing. God is more important than breathing. Jesus is more important than breath itself right now. I need Jesus. Amen? I, I recognize that each and every one of you need Jesus tonight, so stay there. Stay open. Don't don't bottle it up. Don't bottle up your situation. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to keep it to myself. I didn't want to tell anybody. But once, it was the, uh, Sister Daniela calls it the, the COVID mass, right? That's, when, that's the day I found out. That, the day we had the mass, that's the day I found out. And when I, when I came here, I wasn't even planning on telling it to anybody. But the Lord spoke to me and said, you'll never get healed if you don't open up. If you don't open your heart, this is a night of healing, guys. This is a night of, of encounter with the God who heals. So come with your miracle mindset and open your heart to God tonight. Open your heart. Be open. Find yourself on your, be vulnerable tonight before God. Say, God, oh God, I need you. God, oh God, I find myself here. And I need you. Oh, I've been through so much and I need you. Don't worry about who's on your left or who's on your right or who's behind you. It's okay to be transparent before God tonight. Just come to the altar. Don't hesitate. Don't, 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 don't come slow. Come fast to the altar tonight. We will, we will be in the presence of Jesus and come to the altar and expect your miracle because I'm a witness today. He has done it for me, and he will do it for you, Sister Rosa. I don't know if I'm, if I, I've got 30 seconds. i got 30 more seconds. I, I want to tell you one more principle of what I had to learn. Just be honest. Be honest. You know, we, sometimes we, we act like we're okay and we're not okay. Sometimes we act like we got it all together, we got it all figured out, and we have it all just up, you know, we're okay, but, but, we, but we, we just, everything is crooked and upside down and, and broken and wounded inside. But we want people to think we're okay, you know. I'm okay, you're okay, everything's okay. No, it's not okay. And the reason why I want to encourage you and, and encourage me to be honest with ourselves and to be honest with our God is because, because this is the place of grace. This, and when I say the place of grace, it's the place of grace and the place of mercy. The place of grace and mercy is the place where God does his work. So we have to open up. We have to be merciful. We have to be transparent and allow God to work in our lives. Let him do what he does best. Just trust him. I mean, I've been there, been, been there, done that, and he will work a miracle in your life tonight. Amen? Now let's give him a real big praise. Amen. Amen, Deacon Doug. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony. Um, and let's keep praise to God for that, right? For healing Deacon Doug. Um, thank you, God, for, for allowing Deacon Doug to be with us a couple more years. And we'll continue to pray that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. 159 years. Definitely. Amen. 
All right, let us continue with our program for tonight. Um, like mentioned, we, we have Johnny Garcia with us to, tonight. With um, our, The theme for tonight is Come to the Heart of the Father. Um, I think because of COVID, we kind of, at least in my experience, we kind of closed our heart to God, right? Like because everything was closed, churches were closed, and now being able to come back to the church and being able to, I think it's um, a time for, for us to come back to, to our Father. Um, so Johnny Garcia. Yes, well, Rosa will be praying for you. So if we can all extend our hands as we're going to come together and pray for our brother Johnny. Lord Jesus Christ, we would like to thank you for the life of brother Johnny, his wife, and his children. We ask that you continue to bless him in every step that he takes, every breath that he takes. We ask that you fill him up with your spirit at this moment right now. Fill him up with the words that you want us to hear. Open up his heart, open up our hearts so that we can be able to receive the message that you have prepared for us today. Continue to use Brother Johnny as your vessel, as your instrument of peace, as your instrument of love and mercy and sharing and evangelizing your word, God, because you are at the center of all of this. And please help us come back to the heart of you, Father, the heart of you that we're yearning for, the heart of you that we are longing for and that we've been longing for such a long time. We would like to thank you, God, for this opportunity for uniting us here tonight. And like I mentioned before, we would like to continue to pray for Brother Johnny, his wife, and his beautiful children. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Take it away, Brother Johnny. All right, let's give a round of applause to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name, the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but I'm so excited to be here tonight. I feel honored. I don't know why God chose me, but I'm such a big sinner, and I don't know why God keeps on inviting me to come here and or just to any, anywhere, right? Because, you know, I'm so broken. Yeah, and tell, I tell people that I'm a broken man on the road, right? And yes, I am a sinner, but I'm going to tell you I'm a sinner redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Amen? And that gives me hope. That gives me joy. That gives me life. And I want to just thank God for each and one of you. And uh, we're going to read the word of God right now. And I just want to, before I go on, I uh, want to... Oh, Thank you so much, sister. Appreciate it. Round of applause for Sister Rosa right here. Woo! Man, she's on fire right here. Well, let me help you, right, because I feel bad. Great. So what we got right here, guys, okay? Oh, wow. What's going on, huh? Like, what's going on right here? You know, this is a CPR class or what? You know what I mean? Like, how many of you guys are CPR certified first day? All of you guys? Are? Okay, you guys, I'm going to have you, I'm going to uh, assess your skills in a bit. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know, God forbid, right? There's an emergency anywhere, right? It's better to be ready. Uh, it's better to be safe than, you know, be sorry, right? So, 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 so let me say, raise your hands. How many of you guys are CPR first aid certified? You guys work with children or something in a hospital? Or just, just, just like, you know, okay, okay, amen, amen. Jesse, you're, you're certified, bro? By who? By the American Heart Association or by... <laughs> but the records, okay. Is that a legitimate certification? I need to check that. I'm going to have to check that, okay? <laughs> Don't worry. We're going to assess your skills in a bit right now. Uh, uh, but, okay, so I kind of wanted to get your attention, right? We got two mannequins right here. But just ignore the mannequins for right now, okay? <laughs> just ignore them for right now. I just wanted to make sure you guys were awake. That's why I asked Sister Rosa to bring them up here. But I... I, uh, you know, every time I get a chance to share the word of God, to me, it's a privilege. And, and I just want to make a point here tonight before I, I forget, all right? Uh, well, the first one is this, two points. The first one is this, that Jesus uh, is merciful, amen? His mercies are new every morning, says Lamentations 3.23. And also Psalm 136 says that his mercies, his mercy endures forever, amen? Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. So I want to, before I forget, I want to share that 
it's for anyone here. It's a never, 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 never too late to start all over again. Why? Because Jesus is the God of mercy, the God of love, the God of new beginnings, the, the God who gives us a new life, a fresh start and a fresh beginning every day, every morning. You know, if you sin, you know, you fell down, you know, God knows, right? But, you know, he's, that's why he died on the cross. He knew that we were going to sin. He knew, he knew that we were so imperfect. But his love for us is, goes beyond our sin. His love for us goes, reaches into the depths in our heart, of our hearts and whatever we're at, you know, in, in the dark of our holes and trials and tribulations. He reaches out to us and he picks us up. All you have to do is come to him. Amen? Amen. So that's the first point I wanted to make. It's never, never too late. Never. If you're alive, you're breathing, hey, God loves you. God is here. And we're going to give you a chance to pray. We're going to come together as, you know, sowers, brothers and sisters. Come together and just if we cry, we cry together. But we're, you're not alone. We're, we have a family right here. Thank God for Deacon, for, for Father, for everyone right here. This, you guys are my family. I'm, little by little, I'm becoming, I feel like a sower LA member, you know. <laughs> Amen. What, what is the requirement? I had to get jumped in or something? or? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> with holy water. We're going to bless me with holy water. Oh, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you. I don't have to pay a fee, right? No? <laughs> amen. All right, so the first, the first point. Uh, see, let me see if you guys pay attention. What was the first point that I made? It's, amen. Derek, wow. But round of applause to the sisters right here in the front. Man, we are paying attention. Woo, you're going to pass the test right now. You're going to, the, the skills assessment, you're going to do good. I can tell. So that's the first one. The second point I want to make is, is this. You know, I, I hope you guys really swallow this, you know, meditate upon it. Like, it's not just listening to this or hearing this. This is actually can change your life. Uh, I want to invite you to look at the Bible. How many, has, have, you, how many have your Bible? If, can you guys raise it up? You guys have your Bibles here? Anybody? All right, that's, that's okay. Don't worry. Oh, over there. Amen. Praise the Lord, Jose. Good job. All right, but I just want to make a point. I want to encourage each one of you to look at your Bible, not just as the Bible, a, a book. No, no. I want, I want you to start think, changing your perspective, your thinking, and, and start seeing your Bible as a person. Amen? Yes, because this is the Word of God. This is Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. This, is a, this, this Word is alive. This book, the Bible, is alive. It's a living. It's the living word. And uh, sometimes we don't realize that. But I just want to encourage you to start looking into your word, your Bible, as a person. As the person of Jesus Christ. Yes. He is a person. His word is alive. And we, we're going to declare his word. We already did. Father did. And we're going to pray with the word. We're going to meditate with the word. And we're going to act like, you know, according to the Word of God in, in a bit. But I, and so if the Word of God is a person, so what happens when, you know, you know, when, uh, you know, how many couples we have right here? Do you have, like, any, anybody's dating right here? Anybody? Or raise your hand. Don't be shy, guys. Any, any couples here together? Oh, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, yes, you know. Great. So, so <laughs> you know, you guys known each other for years, right? Hey. You think you know your girlfriend pretty good, Mario? You think you will say, like, for the most part? Amen. How about you, Alexia? How, uh, you think you, you get a good sense of who Mario is? Yes, right? Okay, how long you guys been uh, dating? I'm sorry, I don't want to put you guys on the spot, you know, but five years. Amen. Hey, run of applause to the Lord. Nice, holy, Catholic uh, uh, relationship, right? You know, like, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, great. So just like Mario and Alexia, right, they started, like, you know, courting each other, you know, and going out, you know, went to the movies. I'm pretty sure you spent, like, two hours on the phone, and then, you know, just, oh, my goodness, hey, come over to my house, right? So what did they do? They develop a relationship, amen, a relationship, yes. So this, just as they develop a relationship with one another, Jesus, yes, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Word of God. He wants us to develop our relationship with Him. Oh, my goodness. Round of applause for a uh, brother, Jesse, yeah. Woo. He's passing up the Bible. The Bible, say amen. Better late than never, right, brother? Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, so 
I want you to start looking at your Bible as a person, the person of Jesus Christ. Yes, our Lord and Savior who loves us. And he's given us everything that we need to go to heaven, to live a happy life, to sacrifice, to love, to die to self, to, you know, just give everything for him, to evangelize, to share his good news with everyone, right? But we need a relationship with Jesus, with his word, because it's right here, the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, you will know the truth, St. John 8, 31, 32. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen? Praise the Lord. So I want you just to, you know, just sleep on it tonight. But you really, I really want to encourage you. Point number one, yes, it's never too late. Point number two, develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and you know, the Lord is just putting that in my heart so strongly today. By the grace of God, I went to Mass early, and I was just praying. You know, I asked a lot of friends to pray and intercede for me. And then some, the Spirit spoke to me through, like, different, different brothers and sisters. And all oh, glory to God. But the Lord said this, you know, Johnny, tell him. Tell my word, you know. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the truth, right? You know, this is, uh, you know, sometimes, like, when you go eat, right, when you go, when you're hungry, like, like in the mornings, like, we don't even think about, we just eat, correct? Like, when we uh, have lunch, we just start grabbing, going to the fridge, and we don't even think about, oh, let me, I think I am going to eat. No, we just do it, right? We just do it. Like, we eat food. You know what the Bible says? That we should consider f- the Word of God more important than food. Just think about that. The prophet Job said that. So, just as food is important for you to survive and to give you strength to go to work, just as you drink your coffee in the morning if, if you need to or a smoothie or a juice or something, you know, you need to really, really develop that intimate relationship with Jesus' word, with the word of God. And, and you will know the truth. The word of God will show you the truth and you will set you free. How many guys want freedom in Christ? Amen. I don't know about you guys. I want freedom, more freedom in Christ. I want peace, joy, salvation. Yes. And, and today we're going to give you an opportunity to develop that relationship with Jesus Christ if many of you already have a relationship. But if you want to go deeper, right, if you want to go beyond, this is what I love about our Catholic faith because it's such a faith, it's such an adult faith, you know. Uh, like we think we know everything. We would know nothing. Like we just, once we find our faith, we found Jesus, we realize that we need to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. The Holy Eucharist. Oh, my goodness, the Holy Rosary, when go, when you, the sacraments, when we go to confession, when we pray, when we come to prayer, you know, Jesus is there. When we read the word of God, when we uh, evangelize, Jesus is there. There's so many ways that we can find Jesus, but we just have to go deeper, deeper, and deeper. Tonight, tonight, you know, I don't have a lot of time. I have, like, probably, like, 30 minutes left, but, so I better, like, hurry up. Because, you know, I, you know, I want to make sure that you guys get this, get this. So uh, the Word of God says that we cannot just be hearers of the Word of God or readers of the Word of God. You know, but we have to be doers of the Word of God. Amen? That's an action. I love that because that kind of... Separates us from our Christian uh, Protestant brothers and sisters. I love everyone. By the way, you know, we don't put anyone down or anything like that. You know, <laughs> I love everybody. You can be Muslim. I mean, we love you, brother, sister, you know, regardless. You know, you're our brother. I'm just, we're talking about doctrine, right? A Catholic doctrine. You know, where, you know, is we just don't go by faith, right? We not only believe in God, but also our Catholic faith says believe and do, right? Believing and doing, right? You know, we, we are believe in walking, but we're actually doing so, right? It becomes an action. So where I want to go with this. So we cannot just be hearers of the word of God or readers of the word of God, but we have to be doers of the word of God. It has to become an action. What's the point? What's the point if, like, you know, I'm preaching right here, Jose is preaching, or William is preaching, or Rosa, or, you know, Deacon uh, Douglas is preaching, and then you guys, oh, my goodness, what? Like, you know, great, great message. Oh, man, you like, hallelujah, you know. And you stand up and like, man, that message, it, it hurts me right here. And you're like all excited. You're just like clapping, clapping, clapping. But you go back home and 
you kind of like, you know, stay like where, where you were at, right? You know, away from God or just, I don't know, like, no, right? What's the point? The point is that you, we, we need to change, right? When we listen to the word of God, when we hear, when we read the word of God, we has to prompt us. We have to, it has to prompt us to make a choice, decide. We need to ask for knowledge. We need to ask for understanding. If you, go, if you add knowledge and understanding of the word of God equals to wisdom, right? And then the wisdom is going to lead us into becoming the word of God eventually, doing the word of God, acting upon the word of God. That's that's something that I want you guys to, like, meditate upon tonight. Because, you know, if I give a message here, we read the Word of God. But if that doesn't prompt you to do something, to change, you know, if you just stay like, you know, okay, well, great. Then what's the point? What's the point? Jesus, Jesus wants more. He wants deeper, 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 deeper. Kind of like if we've been in our caves all this year, year and a half, right? And it's just, I, I just think of like the, the story of the 10 lepers, right? They were in a cave. They had leprosy. They were sick. They were like, man, you know, I can just imagine, right? Suffering. And they were afraid. They were afraid because if, if lepers would come out in the light, they would be stunned to death, right? But they heard that Jesus was coming. And so what they did, they risked everything, all 10 of them. They risked everything in their lives, just like we are, right? We're kind of taking a risk, right, because of the... Like the, the new variant, Delta, you know, like you say, who, what, Delta, who? The, the Delta variant, right? God forbid in Christ, you know, it doesn't like, you know, go like bad, right? But, okay, we're kind of taking a risk, but you know what? Hey, thank God for you. Thank you for being brave. You know, we're covered by the blood of Jesus, amen? I'll say don't be afraid. Yeah, be cautious, but don't be afraid, amen, because, you know, Jesus is alive. And he can heal our minds, hearts, souls, everything, bodies. So I just, I just want to encourage you to, to be not just hearers and readers of the word of God, but we're going to become what? Doers. Amen. What are we going to become? Doers of the word of God. Yes. We need to like evangelize. We need to like you know, share the gospel. We need to invite people to come here. You know, I heard my mom saying that a lot of churches are empty. People don't want to come back. You know, you're gonna go to, they want to go to Costco. They go, like, to, like, a fiesta. They want to go, like, you know, anywhere, right? But they don't want to go to church. Ah, oh, let's just wait till everything is over, right? Oh, my goodness. No, like, this is the date. We need to come back. But, again, we're going to read the word of God tonight. And I want to encourage you guys to become doers of the word of God because that's what the Lord is calling us to do to change to do something to act upon his calling amen praise the Lord give a round, round of applause to the Lord and Savior Jesus <laughs> so just kind of like just to go over right three points never too late number two what's number two guys point number two relationship with the word of God oh my goodness sister you're like on fire what's your name again oh my goodness praise God you know thank you thank God hey all right point number one point number one right it's never too late number two develop our relationship see Jesus as a person the person of Jesus Christ the word see your Bible as a person number three we got to become doers of the word of God amen yes that's it it's time and we're going to give you a chance to do it right now. There's some people who are like, who are going to need to be resuscitated in a bit. <laughs> yes. And, uh, but let's go on. Let's go on. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Coming back to the heart of the Father. Uh, in the Gospel of Matthew uh, chapter um, 11, verse 28, Jesus, so, he calls us, Come to me, all of you who are weary and tired, and I will give you rest. Come, right? He's, Jesus is always asking us, come, come to me. Come, come. That's an action, right? He's not telling us to believe. He's like, come, right? Well, I guess you have to believe in him if you want to first, right? And then come, okay. Many of you guys believe, right? But the Bible says even the devil believes. The demons, you know, they believe in God. 
you know, but they're not following him, right? So what about you? What about me? We need to answer that call from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come to me, all of you who are weary and tired, all of you, right? Who's not, man, like, like it, was, it was so hot yesterday, right? <laughs> I mean, I was, I want to like take a shower and like, another shower. It was like, I was just kind of tired, right? But, but you know what? Oh, glory to God, you know? It's so good, right? We need to rest. We need, we need Jesus. We need a refreshment of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Also, in another instance, Jesus, when uh, John and, and, and James, they were brothers, they were disciples of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, and, and St. John the ba Baptist, the cousin of Jesus, said, you know, follow him because he's, he's the Messiah, right? Or well, he didn't tell him he's the Messiah, but just follow him. And then they, they asked uh, a teacher, where are you going? And he tells them, come and you will see. Amen. Also, we hear uh, the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, verse 37. I love this verse. By the way, uh, uh, the, this on this gospel is that at the, you know, when he does the miracles of the bread, you know, he multiplies the bread and, and the fish, you know, it's amazing. And this is after, this is after, you know, he does the miracle. Everyone wants to follow him because he did the miracle, right? But they want the food. And he tells them, you know, you look for me because you, you saw the miracle and you want food, you want bread. But he says, you know, you don't want to eat. He says, don't work for this bread that goes bad, but rather work for the, bed, the, the bread that will last forever. And he says, I am the living bread. I, have, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And then the, 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 the dialogue continues, continues, and then they're asking him, Lord, give us this bread. We want this bread. And they don't realize that I am the bread. He's like, I am the bread. I am the one who gives you life. So this is from chapter 6, verse 37. And he says, he tells them, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me. Oh, my goodness. The Father, right? Today, we're coming back to the heart of the Father. Amen. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me. I am so amazed if you meditate upon that. So it's the Father who allows us to meet his Son, Jesus, our merciful Father. Sometimes we, I, I feel kind of, we kind of neglect the Father sometimes, you know. Of course, it's all about Jesus, right? But the Father... He's the one who created everything. He's the one who allowed us to meet his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, our life, our God, our everything. And he tells them, and so he says, everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me. The, the gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, we're talking about coming, right? Coming, coming. It's an action. We need to come. We need to do something. We need to stand up. We need to start walking. Do something. And, and you know, it's such a wonderful privilege, honor to be called to follow Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And I just, I just uh, heard watching EWTN a few nights ago that St. Augustine says that, you know, that coming, you know, when he he says, come, right? Okay, so when we decide to come to Jesus, that action, right, that coming to him, that act of giving our lives, hearts, minds, and souls to him, our bodies, everything to him, everything that we have and possess to him, that when we start serving him, that we join a ministry, that we do discipleship classes, we read the Bible, we start serving others, we start evangelizing, right? That's our coming to him, our path, our journey with Jesus. That in itself it's heaven. St. Augustine said that that itself is Jesus because he says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? Wow. I was just like, oh, my goodness. So, like, yes, right? Like, our journey, our coming to Jesus, right? The action is Jesus himself. So, if you're following Jesus, you're already in, in the way. You're in Christ. You, but you have to continue right you cannot just get stuck on the road we have to continue 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 and it reminds me of a message that noel diaz our founder of el sembrador god bless his heart and this is a message that he preached many years ago in the early 2000s i didn't even hear the message but i heard from another friend that he he was so touched by this message like like i was touched too i still i'll preach about it that he said that noel diaz said that you know the important thing is this right 
that you stay in the way, in the path of the Lord, right? Like doing something. Even if you're injured, right? Even if you're like beat up or tired, you know what? As long as you stay in the way, right? That's, that's okay. As long as you stay in the way. The, the danger is when you get out from the path of God, right? Like when there, you go over there and there's dark, darkness, there's wolves. That, I mean, that's the danger, right? But he says, as long as you stay, somebody, hopefully, right, one of you guys, somebody's going to pick you up and carry you or just going to stay with you and just going to give you a hand, give your shoulder or something, bring some, something, you know, crutches so you can continue your journey right to the end. And, and, and I was just like, I got to share this with the sowers. I gotta, to me, it was like such a revelation. But the acting, the coming, it starts right now. And I want to share that I, many years ago, was a black sheep with my family. Many of you guys are my testimony. Such a rebellious uh, young man. Uh, so broken, right, because of my brokenness. No excuse, you know, but I just didn't want to know about Christ. I suffer so much, suffer so much, suffer so much, right? I, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. And then, uh, like, Jesus gave me hope. Jesus gave me life. Jesus gave me truth. And, and someone rescued me. I want to play a little track right here. Track. You know, not, um, my wife and I, we and my two girls, we went to Fish Fest, a Christian worship concert at the uh, Irvine Spectrum or some, some place. And uh, it was like a lot of worship artists right there. And we just worshiping God. We're like, man, praying. And uh, it was just amazing, right? And so we <laughs> So, oh, can you, can you just pause it? Oh, hold on. All right, All right. I'm, I'm playing right now. But so I heard uh, this song. Oh, man, so powerful. There's this young man. His name is Danny Goki. I'm pretty sure you heard the song. It's a Christian artist, Christian song. But he, like, he lost his wife. He has four kids. Uh, they were just, I mean, she had, like, a heart, um, you know, defect. She, he, she passed, like, you know, some four kids, four kids. Oh, my goodness, right? God have mercy. Just imagine that battle. Well, like, I didn't go through that battle, but, you know, I was dying spiritually, physically, emotionally, psychologically. I was just dying. I was dying, right? And then by the grace of God, somebody showed me Jesus, right? Show, show me the way. And I started walking, and it was hard. It was tough. It was, like, you know, chaotic, right? Because I was trying to serve Jesus, and then the world was calling me like crazy, right? I was, like, in a rave scene, and then, and then, I, I wanted to follow Christ, but then they were calling me. People would call me like, hey, let's go party or something. Like, what? It's crazy. It was like a, the battle was real, right? And then uh, they played this song. It was just really, man, it touched my heart a lot. So I just want to listen to it. So, so just think of this, right? Think of the hardest moment that you have gone through in your life. Or maybe that you're going through right now. I don't know what you're going through. But fear, worry, doubt, or I don't know, right? Maybe an illness, sickness, disease, disability, disorder, some condition. Hey, you know, we're, we're there. I mean, we just came out of a pandemic, right? It, it's crazy. But just, just if you could just close your eyes and listen to this track, I just want to, the Lord is speaking to you through this song. There's a name that can silence every fear. There's a love that embraces the heartache, the pain, and the tears. Through my faith and my doubting, I know one thing for sure. His word is unfailing, His promise secure. Todo va a estar bien, everything will be alright. Whole world's in His hands, your whole world's in His hands. In the darkness and the trials, He's faithful and He is true. The whole world's in His hands, you todo va a estar bien. Oh, 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 everything will be all right. Oh, 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 oh. Mm, yeah. Uh, Father, you say everything's gonna be all right. But my circumstances say I won't last through the night. I need your word to hold me now. I need you to pull me through. I need a miracle, a breakthrough. I need you. They say you hold the whole universe in your hand. But my world's falling apart like it is made of sand. Am I small enough to slip through the cracks? Can you take my broken pieces and put them back? Give me faith. You believe you are on my side. Open my eyes and see you working in my life. Let the past remind me you'd never fail. And tell my soul it is well, oh. Y todo va a estar bien. Everything will be alright. The whole world's 
in his hands your whole world's in his hands in the darkness in the trials he's faithful and he's true your whole world's in his hands you don't know outside of you everything oh, oh, oh. everything will be everything all right Padre, te confieso a corazón abierto que todo es muy incierto en este desierto. Mi vulnerabilidad está al descubierto. Siento que mi barca está muy lejos de su puerto. ¿Por qué será que ya no sale el sol en mis días? ¿Por qué mis noches son tan frías? ¿Por qué será que siento que me falta algo? ¿Por qué este camino gris se siente tan largo? Sé que está sobrando aunque no te sienta. Sé que está sobrando aunque no te vea. Sé que voy a salir de esta odisea Sé que voy a ganar esta pelea Sé que va a cesar esta marea temporaria Que en ti yo viví una vida extraordinaria Y aunque no puedo entender Me consuela saber que Todo, yo sé que Todo va a estar bien Todo va a estar bien Everything will be alright The whole world's in his hands Your whole world's in his hands In the darkness, in the trials He's faithful and he's true Your whole world's in his hands You don't know I'll start again Oh, 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 oh. Everything will be alright got the whole world in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands he's got the whole wide world in his hands todo el mundo en su mano está todo el mundo en su mano está todo el mundo en su mano está man a round of applause to our lord hey man wow Thank you guys so much. So let's let's go. Let's get to the to this to this class, right? I just kind of wanted to do a little something different, right? The Holy Spirit works in mysterious ways, you know. Some of you already heard the word of God. Some of you heard the music. Some of you heard the testimony. We're gonna pray right now. Now we're gonna learn how to save a life. Um, so there's um. There's actually, you know, some steps that you got to take, right? If um, somebody's unconscious, there's some, like, you know, sequences that you have to follow. The first, the first thing is this, right? You walk into a room. If you see somebody is on the floor unconscious, the first thing you got to do is you got to check, right, for safety, right? That's a protocol. Why? Because you don't know there's an active shooter. Maybe somebody's going to fall. There's a fire. Someone's about to explode. So safety is the first thing, right? So you check for safety. You come in, and then you, you check with the person, right? Number two, you got to, you know, make sure that you, like, you got you to gotta tap them, right? Are you okay? Are you okay, right? Because why are they taking a nap? And then you're like, I'm like what? <laughs> right? So that's number two, you know? So you go, hey, are you okay? Are you okay? You got to tap them. Like, no response, then you don't need permission, right? So you can start CPR. But before you start CPR, you need to call 911 or you need to ask for help, right? You need to ask. Uh, why? Because, again... The, 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 the fastest somebody comes with an AED, you know, uh, defibrillator, the, and, like, if you do CPR, if the heart doesn't start pumping blood, then, you know, you have minutes, like five, six, seven minutes. And so hopefully, right, uh, you can buy time for the, for the paramedics to come and, and bring the defibrillators, the, the AED. So let me do a little uh, demonstration right here. So 30 compressions, uh, 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Uh, 30 compressions, and then two sets of, of, of rescue breaths. Then you continue the comp 30 compressions deep, deep. You know, you got to go deep. For adults, it's probably like inches. For children, it's like one inch, one and a half inches. 
Why, why is it so important for the heart to start pumping blood? We do the compressions because what we do is this. We push, we press the heart so the heart hopefully can start pumping, revive, start pumping again naturally. Or, uh, or what we want to do is make sure we squeeze the heart and make sure the, we create blood flow from the heart to the brain and to the limbs, right? Especially to the brain. That's, that's why we do the compressions. The rescue breaths, why the rescue breaths are important? Because then we want to make sure that we are providing eggs air to the lungs, right? And that's, that's what we do. So can you guys stand for a little bit? So I, I want to I wanna make sure that you guys, can you guys come a little closer? So you, there's a, I just want to show you this, right? You're going to see two little, um, you're going to see two little light. Yeah, yeah, come, 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 come close, guys. This is going to be uh, a good class. Over there in the back, everyone come. Look at the demonstration, right? So first thing we do, right? I come in. I'm like, oh, my goodness, what's going on, right? Is everything safe? Yeah, yeah, everything looks okay. Or are you okay? 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 No response, right? So I start CPR. So before, before I start CPR, you know, if I'm by myself, take out my phone, put it on speaker, call 911, put it on speaker, and just say, give them my address, right? And start CPR. If I'm with somebody else, I go, Mario, call 911. Alexia, go get the AED. You know, and then, yes, you know. So we start, right? 30 compressions. Breaths, lift up the chain, close the nose. And we continue, right? We continue, but this is tiring. This is tiring, right? So the ideal thing is there's two people. There's two people helping us do the CPR. And, um, and hopefully, right, the, the paramedics are on their way. We're trying to save a life right here, right? This could be a child. This could be God forbid in Christ. This could be a loved one. This could be anybody, right? Now, let's... let's Let's, uh, let's think of all of this in the spiritual realm, right? We do the same thing right here. In, in other words, we're kind of like lifesavers, right? Jesus is he's the doctor. He's our, our God and our saviors. He's everything. But he has given us the tools to save people's lives, to rescue them. You know, there's a lot of people who are dying right now as we speak spiritually. I'm talking like psychologically, mentally, and, and even physically, right? Yes, yes. And... Um, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough. This is a reality. This is, this is tough right here. We, we're talking about people's souls right here. But, you know, if you think about it, we're trying to resuscitate the heart. You know, now let's think about, you know, our hearts, right? Let's think about my heart, your heart. How is your heart? You know, our hearts are broken. Our hearts are, are, are sick. Our, our hearts are, you know, wounded. Our hearts are bleeding. You know, we need, we need CPR. We need a spiritual CPR. We need a, more than a CPR. We need a, like a, a change of heart, you know, a, trans, a transplant. Because, you know, we're suffering. We, we need, we need Jesus. So I was just going to ask you to pray right now because I know time is short, you know. Can you play that one track again? But stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. Stay there. Can you play the track? Just lower the music. But, you know, I just wanted to, we're going to like, you know, pray in a bit. But just stay there. And I know we're gonna bring the, we're gonna do something special. We're gonna, we have a surprise for all of you guys. You know, um, I've been serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for many years, for many years. You know, and I, you know, I have given opportunity to preach at retreats and and to to bring the gospel of Jesus to many people. You know, yet I recognize that my heart is still wounded. That I still need to be healed from a lot of things. I did, I did the Unbound program, and I, I found a lot of deliverance. And, and I, I'm still looking for, for Jesus. I'm still looking for more. Again, we're talking about going deeper, right? Yes, you know. And, and that's okay because 
you know, sometimes God will break you so, so that way you can, He can find you, right? God will allow you to suffer so He can save your life, so He can fully heal you or set you free. And uh, I, I have suffered. Some of you guys know my testimony. And I have, I don't know if I shared this, but back in uh, 2019, when uh, I found out that my daughter, my wife was expecting our second daughter, I went through uh, crazy states of anxiety. You know, I don't know if it had something to do that, you know, I was not going to become a new dad. We had two miscarriages in the past. And um, I don't know why, right? I, 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 I started to find out why, Lord, why? What's going on, right? But it got to the point of like, you know what? It, it was not important to know why, but it was important to just to surrender, right? And to take it, to submit myself to the, to the will of God. You know, Jesus said, anyone who wants to follow me must deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. That's painful. And um, in 2018, and one night, I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but if you have gone through the anxiety, but I, I had a, a massive uh, panic attack, and uh, I, I thought I was having a heart attack, and uh, I was just thought I was, <laughs> was going to die. I had no, never experienced something like that before. It was so painful, so like, I felt so helpless, and I wanted to call 911, and I remember my wife said this, you know, so, to, oh, no, go ahead, go keep it continuing, I'm sorry. My, my, my wife said those words, sorry, hey, don't worry, everything's going to be all right, everything's going to be all right. But, but I was so distracted looking into my pain, I was so distracted looking into, like, I guess I wanted to have control. I didn't want to give away control. I, I was so, I don't know, it was tough. But, but my wife kept on saying, don't worry, don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. And by the grace of God, I found a lifeline. You know, I reached out to one of my friends here, and I actually called Jose. You know, it was like, it was like a 12 or midnight. Or, and my brother Jose, he prayed for me. Oh, my goodness, you know. He gave me a lot of hope. He prayed for me. He like, I think it was one in the morning or something. But he gave me a lot of hope. He gave me like, man, we prayed together. I'll never forget that. I mean, eventually the anxiety, the attack subsided. And uh, by the grace of God, you know, it's been a journey for me, right? It's been a journey. But, um, and by the grace of God, the Lord has healed me. He's healing me from all of this, right? But the reason I want to share this is because, you know, we all go through pain. We're going through pain. We're going through brokenness. We're going through like different things, you know. It could be anxiety, dis anxiety disorder, depression, fear, worry, doubt, guilt, shame, condemnation, despair, uh, any type of illness, you know. Jesus can heal you, and Jesus can can restore your life, just as has He done it with my life. So, um, Jesus is calling you. He says, "Come, come to me." And um, I just want to leave you with that, that he is here tonight, and he wants to bless you, and he wants to heal you, and he wants to start a deep, intimate relationship. He wants to save you and set you free in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is what we're going to do. Can you play one more time, brother? This is what I invite you guys to do. I want to invite you guys to, whoever wants to do this, if you can just go to the back, right? If you can just go to the back, all of you guys. And then um, as you walk through the center of this hallway, of this alley, or, or right here in the middle, as you come to Jesus, as he's calling you, I want you to meditate on your journey. I want to invite you to med meditate on your life, your actions, your decisions, and just see yourself, see all your struggles, see all of your obstacles, see all the setbacks, all the saddest moments that you have been experienced in your life, and just receive the love of Jesus tonight. Father, you say everything's gonna be alright. 
But my circumstances say I won't last through the night I need your word to hold me now I need you to pull me through I need a miracle and breakthrough I need you They say you hold the whole universe in your hand But my world's falling apart like it is made of sand Am I small enough to slip through the cracks? Can you take my broken pieces and put them back? Give me faith, you believe you are on my side Open my eyes and see you working in my life Let the past remind me you'd never fail And tell my soul it is well, oh. Y todo va a estar bien. Everything will be alright. The whole world's in his hands. The whole world's in his hands. In the darkness, in the trials. He's faithful and he's true. The whole world's in his hands. Y todo va a estar bien. Everything, oh. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus as you are and bow down in adoration falling the great sacrament we hail over ancient forms of worship ne'er rites of great faith faith will tell us Christ is present when our human senses fail. To the everlasting Father and the Son who made us free and the Spirit God proceeding from the, them each eternally. Be salvation, honor, blessing, might, and endless majesty. Amen, amen, amen. Blue. 